Welcome to labminutes.com. In this video, we will look at DMVPN Phase 3. If you watch our NHRP Phase 3 video, you would have seen the benefit of running the, the Phase 3 with the route summarization and the spoke be, being able to talk to another spoke, although the next hop IPs are uh, it's actually the hub IPs and not the spoke IPs. Here we're going to look at or demonstrate the second benefit of running phase 3 which is a capability of partitioning your network into a different DMVPN region and have those regions connected to each other by the central region. First we're going to start building our network um, just by based on phase 1 and phase 2. So here we have five routers. We're going to be using the same physical topology, the same one they've been using for the previous labs. And we have R2 and R3 acting as the hubs for two different regions. And then we also have R1 that's acting as a central hub that connecting the two regions together. R4, R5 as always is spoke a router with the two subnets and we were trying to provide the connectivity between those subnets. So I have already um, come up with the templates for all these routers. We could go through them quickly just to save time. The first one we start off with the router one. So these are the template. Again, if you have you been watching our where there's an NHRP video or DMVPN video, this should all look very familiar to you. So here we have a central hub tunnel tree three with IP address three dot one, network ID one, key three. Nose plate horizon. And we're going to actually let me take out that summarize for now. Enable EAGRP and crypto uh, policy. But like I mentioned in the previous video, let's just do the NHRP part of the config and make sure all those are working and then we'll complete the IPsec portion of it. So copy paste R1. Next we go to R2. And on the R2, uh, R2 there are two tunnels. So the tunnel one pointing down to the regional cloud with um, Tunnel 1 IP is 1.2, network ID 1, tunnel key 1, and EHRP. So just copy those, paste those in. If I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video and make sure you fully understand the config. Here we have tunnel 3 that connects to the central domain. Here we have a 3.2 network ID 1 get rid of that okay and it has the static uh, mapping to the hub 3.1 to 4.1 okay the regular NHRP configuration okay our first neighbor came up. Next we'll do uh, router 3. Okay, router 3, config T. IP address 2.3 for the second regional domain. Network 1 key 1 and then the EIGRP. Okay. And then tunnel 3 pointing up to the central uh, domain with the IP address of 
network stew one, tanuki three. Okay. Give one second and the neighbor came up. Next we're gonna do router four with uh, tunnel one, tunnel IP one dot four, network ID one, key one, and then static map to the its its regional hub, which is R2. So, 1.2 map to 4.5 and again EHRP okay EHRP came up now the second spoke router router 5 connecting to its own region Tunnel 1, having IP of 2.5, network ID 1, and with the static map to R3, 2.3 to 4.9. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the network diagram is a little too big, so I can't really show it for the whole time. But feel free to go out to go onto our website, log in, and uh, the network diagram should be available for download. So you can have that printed out and have it right next to you for reference. Okay, let's double check with um, R3, and it has two neighbor. One is up to the central and that one down to the spoke. Same with R2, uh, show IP, EIGRP, neighbor, two neighbors. And then R5, show IP route, EIGRP. You can see the route belongs to R4, came across, with uh, R3 being a next hop. Okay, now we have verified the um, the NHRP part is up and running. Let's complete our IPsec portion. So that's for R1 with uh, tunnel 3. Okay. Then we go to R2. R2 has tunnel 1 and 3. 1 and 3. And here we want to put the share command at the at the end because it's the, the two tunnel interfaces are sharing the same physical interface. Okay, just to show you that last command that we put question mark. Let's see, as you said, used uh, the share socket for crypto connection and. That should be exactly what we need for R3. Okay, and then on R2, I'm sorry, R4 and R5, let's just tunnel one. Okay, we'll give it a second, make sure everything kind of get back into place. Show IP, HRP, neighbor. So back to neighbors in R2. And two neighbors in R3. So everything looks good. Do a quick check on the tunnel. So R3 has two tunnel, one to R1, one to R5. And R2 also has two tunnels. Okay, so right now we have pretty much completed the phase one. Let's see if we actually have phase two, and that's by doing the HRP, look at that, and 
comes to pointing to R3, uh, R1 for the next top. Uh, let's just do that real quick just to show you. So before en enabling phase two, if you do trace 172.16.55.1 from R4, you can see it takes hops to R2, R1, down to R3, and R5s. So go through every single router we have here. But now if you turn on phase two, which is a spoke to spoke, on R1, tunnel 3, no IP, next top self, EIG1. Okay, next top now has become router 3. Do that once, second times. You can see it eliminates the R1 from the path. Once the R2 and R3 build a spoke-to-spoke -spoke tunnels, okay. But our goal here is to build a spoke-to-spoke -spoke tunnel between R4 and R5. So now we need to enable phase three. Okay. So let me get back to R1 and put that back. And now the two commands for that is. IP and HRP redirect and shortcut. So on R1, I'm going to do tunnel 3 IP and HRP redirect. On R2, IP phase to you. Let me just do it right here. Tunnel 1, IP and HRP redirect, IP and HRP shortcut. And copy that for ton of three as well. Okay, and uh, three, uh, four. So actually, only have ton of one, so ton of one only. And R five, ton of one. Uh, let's take a quick look at R one. Uh, let's clear the, oh, not R1, I mean R2. Yeah, let's clear the NHRP mapping here. Okay, so we're back to 1.4 and 3.1, great, okay. We do the same thing for uh, 3, sure, click clear IP NHRP. Start out fresh. Now in R4, check crypto, and there's only one tunnel right now. Try PNH, and there's only one entry for an HRP as well, static ones. Okay, now let's do trace route one more time from R4 to R5. Okay, once. Twice, there you go. So you can see you have eliminated essentially three hops, which is R2, R1, and R3. Okay, show cry SA. Well, actually, let's do SA SA. And now you can see there's a, a direct tunnel between. Dot 13 being R4 and dot 14, uh, 17 being R5. Okay, and the trace route itself kind of reflects that already because it's hops directly to R5, which is 2.5. Okay. So you can see, although the R4 is actually on a totally separate subnet of the town interface, which is 192.168.1.4. It's able to talk to R5 directly that's on a completely different subnet, just 192.168.2.5. And the router doesn't really care because it's just considered a point-to-point -point connection or dynamic spoke-to-spoke -spoke connection. So as soon as the packet gets encapsulated and ended up on R5, R5 can just easily accept that. 
Okay, so the diagram shows here GR resource is 1.4 and destination is 2.5. Okay, you can do the other way around as well just to confirm 44.1 source 0. Okay, once. Twice, there you go. So again, once the tunnel is built, so the first time tunnel is not yet built, so it has to traverse throughout the hub. Once the tunnel the spoke to spoke tunnel is built, it can talk directly. Okay, if we do show IP in HRP on R4, and here again, because it's resolved the shortcut command. We use that for routing. So to get to 55, you want to talk to 4.17. So in the sense, the NHRP and the IPsec kind of coordinate here, and the IPsec knows this IP is also the tunnel endpoint IPs. So I know how to correctly build the IPsec tunnel too. So I can do show crypto. IPsec SA peer of that. You can see NCAP DCAP packets and an active IPsec tunnel. Okay. So this topology right here, or this particular scenario, is good for scalability if you want to split your network into multiple regions and then connected them by a hub. Um, obviously you probably want redundant routers in your um, production just to make sure if something fail everything continues to work. But from this diagram let me point out a couple gotchas that you or I experienced when you're trying to set up this lab. So first is NHRP ID. So when you set up these um, different domain or re uh, domains Please make sure that the NHRP ID is identical or you use the same NHRP ID for all of them because that's very critical for the NHRP packets or res resolutions for that to work correctly between the regions. And the second is the GRE key. So although you usually use a, a different GRE keys, normally when you have the two tunnels, so for example R2 here, it shares the same physical interface, FAST00, zero, zero, and you have two tunnels is using that. It's normal to use two um, unique keys, so the crypto or the router knows once it decrypted the packets, which tunnel is supposed to place the packet into. Because as far as the IPsec encapsulation is concerned, they look identical. It's just the GRE that would distinguish. Uh, headers distinguish between the, what tunnel the packet belongs. So if you were to have the key 1, key 3, and key 2 down here, this would not work. Because when R4 sends a packet to R5, the R5 will be looking for key 2. But since it's receiving something that's key 1, it will fail. It would not accept that packet. So it is critical to make sure that your regional domain use the same GRE key. So here we just use GRE key 1 on both domains and everything is working just fine. So that's it for DMVPN phase 3 video. Thank you for watching labminutes.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.